Well, the Snyder Cut is out. People have watched it. And shocker, uh, giant spoilers, the core movie is still the core movie. I, it's, it's, uh, I, I, I've mentioned this in other places, just, um, I, you know, I, I was watching people come off of watching that and saying things like, but where were the green lanterns? I thought that, uh, you know, the flash was going to be recast as a new actor. And it just, it's like, what, what did you think was happening? It was a, it was a director's cut. Yes. There were absolutely some different scenes. Yes. If you watched both movies, what you got was the same core story, but with some fairly major differences in how it was presented. Uh, there were some additional scenes. We have Martian Manhunter. We got Dark Side. There's a lot of stuff added. And I think for people who are big fans of the Snyder Cut or this whole concept, they're billing this, this entire thing as, uh, you know, it's a majorly different movie. It's not. Uh, people who dislike it are labeling it kind of as, uh, oh, it's just longer. It's more than just longer. There are other scenes, and it does change the perspective how it's done. And I also think uh, it's, it's better. The Snyder Cut is better than the original cut. Uh, other than it's extremely long <laughs> and that's tough to sit through. Um, it is, it, but, but I mean, yeah, when I mean, with the link, they're able to go into more detail with things. Um, you don't have the kind of very strange tonal shift you got with a lot of the Joss Whedon stuff. There's some fan service in there about adding some other characters. All seems normal. Um, but talking about the Snyder Cut is really tricky because there are a lot of angles of uh, basically different factions, the, uh, the, the woke, the anti-woke, the uh, toxic fans versus the it, just there's all these different groups feeding into it. And unfortunately, if you really want to have some fun, you can enter into any argument and you can immediately take a position to argue with people, no matter where you're coming from. It's, it's, it's a gift. For example, uh, the, you know, you could make the case that the original Joss Whedon cut was directed by a problematic director, uh, Joss Whedon in a toxic environment that we saw with, uh, Ray Fisher and, and Cyborg. And so any kind of erasing or moving on from Joss Whedon is a good thing. So therefore, uh, to be properly, you know, properly uh, responsible, progressive people, we should eliminate that that problematic Joss Whedon and, and get rid of it. On the other hand, it was a lot of, uh, of quote unquote, toxic fans who were attacking Joss Whedon back before it was cool to attack Joss Whedon, who uh, in theory got this project back up and going. And so, it, you know, caving to their demands is uh, is also terrible and we shouldn't have done it and nobody Snyder cut should have never been made there's a Vox article up right now um, that basically says Justice League's Snyder cut saga reminds us which fans voices get heard the HBO Max release of the fabled Snyder cut happened thanks to a mix of entitlement harassment and privilege uh, it does uh, neatly skate over um, all of the, uh, you know, it's not convenient for this article to talk about the Joss Whedon stuff, so it doesn't. And instead, it focuses on certain voices in fandom are valorized above others and teaches us a dangerous lesson, forgetting for the moment that in many other areas of uh, pop culture that, uh, you know, you are, you are seeing kind of the alternate view, the more progressive, the more, uh, you know, quote, woke or not woke uh, views are all there. Everybody's getting a little bit of something. That's the, the crazy part. So anyone who's saying that, uh, you know, they are the victim and you know, only one group is getting what they want is a little bit insane. Um, I, particularly for this version, because I think you could make a more compelling argument at the moment that, uh, there is, there is more of the opposite ideology, uh, going into making a lot of these decisions than this one. So I, I just find it, I, I find it all pretty funny. I mean, it, it is weird to, um, I mean, I don't know, have they made, have they made a, uh, a updated the last Jedi movie right now? Uh, is that, is that happened? No, it hasn't happened. So let's not talk about how certain voices in fandom are valorized above all others and get what they want. If that was true, there would be a, you know, a new, you know, the, the Ryan Johnson star Wars would have been replaced by some new star Wars. So it's, it's a little bit crazy. Uh, one of the arguments that come into here is, uh, you know, basically says that the Mandalorian, uh, was, was giving something to toxic fans, uh, to appease them for the Ryan John. It's, it's like dummies, Disney's trying to make money any way they can. They're, they're just throwing random bait out into the water. Um, in many cases, I think you could, you could say that these companies have no idea what they're doing and they're just frantically just trying to find any audience they can. So the idea that they're, they're appealing to 
toxic fans is is a little silly. Um, many of the articles around the Snyder Cut go into, I don't know, it, it, it's it's very easy to go onto Twitter and find something insane. And so when people say, you know, there's a there's an art, there's a line in this Vox article that says, consider the barrier gaze hashtag, which erupted in social media uh, in response to a, a major lesbian character uh, being killed in the CW series, The 100. And it it goes into uh, kind of that kind of representation. They, they bring a bunch of uh, quote unquote toxic fans who are responding to this hashtag. But here's the thing. Twitter is a hellhole. I mean, it's not any more complicated than that. You can go onto Twitter and you can find insanity from any ideology, any person, any direction really easily. And Twitter encourages it. The entire, I mean, the whole goal of Twitter, if, if you haven't picked up on it yet, is to throw out a crazy hot take to get attention and get, you know, get people to retweet your stuff. That's the, that's the game that's being played. So shocking, um, you know, it, it is, uh, it is, I, I, people do that. I don't know. It, it's, it's very funny to kind of read this, this stuff. Um, it is interesting where they're talking about uh, the Captain America, where the storyline where they made him a Nazi in the Secret Empire uh, storyline and the fact that, uh, you know, toxic fan entitlement caused fans to boycott the series through the hashtag say no to Hydra camp cap. Um, if people don't like a storyline and they decide not to buy it, that's not toxic fan entitlement. That's people choosing not to spend their money. It's 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 absolutely it's bizarre and frankly it's dangerous to see these articles that uh, that that basically claim people making their free choice to buy or not buy something is an indication of anything else than them choosing what they're what they're spending their money on. It's it's very weird. I mean, the alternative is what the alternative is that people should be forced to buy the comic. Um, and by the way. Why is this article uh, and, and people going into a Nazi version of Captain America is a good thing? I, I, isn't that a bad thing? Like, why? why what is going on? Uh, anyway, back to the Snyder Cut. Um, the other interesting thing is, and, and thanks uh, very much to a, a very kind person who sent me uh, this, uh, you know, this, uh, these, these articles. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, it is, uh, it, the Snyder Cut seems to be doing okay. Um, it basically, uh, by the numbers that we do have now, the numbers are very secretly controlled from HBO max and other places. So we don't know the exact information. Um, it is, it, it is, uh, it appears that the Snyder cut is getting some good attention. Uh, the numbers are high. There's some analysis that people are doing, suggesting that it beat the Falcon and winter soldier premiere in terms of views. This is all a weird kind of magic math people use in order to kind of put this stuff together, but it wouldn't be a surprise to me if it did. I think that, uh, this is a heavily hyped film. There's a lot of, uh, controversy and interest around it. I'd be curious to see if there's any stats to see how many people, uh, basically put up with it and watch the whole thing. Uh, I suspect there's a lot of people who kind of dropped out. Uh, but anyway, it is, uh, it, you know, it's fine. I think the justice league is, um, it, it, you know, it seems to be doing well. There's a lot of different sites who are talking about the fact that, uh, it, it has spiked some numbers. They, we do have some anecdotal evidence that suggests more people signed up for HBO masks at max. And so it seems to be a success. What's, what's curious is that there's other articles, um, in particular from this site, cosmic book news that you should never trust for absolutely anything. Keep in mind, this is a site that talked about how Marvel was being closed down three years ago, that DC was being closed down in January. And then again, in July, cosmic book news is absolute garbage uh, in terms of anything. Uh, they are claiming kind of inside sources and information that says that the Snyder cut has failed to deliver worse than wonder woman, 1984. Um, and they're, they're basic, they hinge their entire article on the fact that uh, Warner Media CEO and Sarnoff uh, basically did an interview saying that Zack Snyder's trilogy is done, that they're not going to uh, be doing more, and that uh, the ire cut of the Suicide Squad isn't happening. So from that, they have a, uh, they have basically, uh, you know, um, claimed that it's not doing well. Um, th this is absolute garbage of, of information. Uh, it's no surprise that they're not doing more with Zack Snyder's cut. Zack Snyder himself has been somewhat tepid about whether he'd do more or not. He'd, he'd love to continue to play in this universe at the same time. It's clear that everybody is moving on. Um, the idea that the Suicide Squad, a movie with far less marketing potential, 
would get a, a you know new cut of that film. Um, it was it was unusual what they did it for this movie. It makes sense for a launch of HBO Max. They're not going to do it again. In general, the news around all this is pretty crazy. Um, I don't. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, you know, what are you going to do? I, <laughs> it's uh, I, at the end of the day. You like it, you don't like it. Keep in mind one of these other articles uh, that is up on on Cosmic Book News um, today is that Robert Kirkman is going to buy uh, DC Comics. So um, it, th- this this entire uh, site is absolute absolute garbage. So there you go. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, that's that's it. Did you enjoy the Snyder Cut? Uh, at the end of the day, are, are you you know what what do you make of all this? I, I hate this this whole. Uh, toxic fandom uh, argument, and more often than not, it's just it's it's being leveraged by one group to defend why they like something and other people shouldn't. That that's all. There's there's no logic. There's no merit behind it. Um, yes, people get uh, salty and they get shitty on social media. There's no doubt about it. People act like complete assholes. A hundred percent, they do. Um, but. That's that's far different from what's being thrown around here, and maybe it's time to just uh, go with the you know the Occam's razor approach again. The simplest answer: Hey, uh, Twitter is garbage town, and a lot of people say stupid stuff on Twitter. And maybe if that platform went away, magically you'd see a lot of this toxic fandom and other things. Uh, this this all this argument stop from all sides. But what do I know? I who knows? Anyway, there you go. <laughs> Cosmic Book News is such shit. <laughs> anyway, let me know your thoughts on the Snyder Cut and all these silly things. And thanks for listening.